So hi everyone, my name is Sarah Isinga and I'm the manager of patient programs, research and advocacy here at Lymphoma Canada. And I'm pleased to welcome you all to the second day of our national patient conference um, and the first educational session of the day on the importance of knowing your subtype. Um, now, before I start this presentation, there are a few things that I'd like to re remind the audience members of. This session is being recorded and the recording will become available following the conference. Um, at the end of the session, we'll leave about a few minutes for the question and answer period. So please type your questions um, in the black toolbar at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Now, in today's presentation, I'm going to be giving a brief introduction about what lymphoma is and how it develops, how it's categorized, and ultimately why knowing the name of your specific lymphoma subtype is important to you and your loved ones. Um, and at the end of the presentation, I'll provide you with some guidance on how to find information on your specific subtype. So lymphoma is cancer of the, of the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is a system of vessels, nodes, and organs that are found all throughout your body. This includes your tonsils, your thymus, your lymph nodes, your spleen, and bone marrow. And there's three main functions of the lymphatic system. The first one is to circulate and regulate fluid. The second one is to absorb fat from the digestive system. And the third one is to defend the body against infection. And this is overall very important for your immunity and overall health. So lymph nodes are these are really small bean-shaped organs found throughout your body. They filter fluid, which contains lymphocytes, the immune cells of the lymphatic system, um, and they circulate all throughout your body. And so in this filtering system, they remove bacteria, viruses, and other foreign substances that aren't supposed to be there. Um, and there's hundreds of these nodes in your bodies. They're located in your elbow, your groin, your neck, and armpits. And whenever you have an infection, these lymph nodes can swell. And ultimately, this, this just means that the, your body is helping you fight the virus that you have. Um, and lymphatic cancer occurs when these immune cells or lymphocytes grow in an abnormal way or at an out of control rate, at a very um, fast rate. And so lymphoma is actually an umbrella term that covers 80 different related cancers. And these are known as the lymphoma subtypes. Um, and lymphoma is characterized and ultimately diagnosed from the cell that your cancer starts in. So there's many different subtypes. Um, and because there are many different types of cells in your lymphatic system. And the first way lymphoma is categorized generally is by Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So when you look at cells from your lymphatic um, cancer underneath a microscope, usually this is done by pathologists, they look for the presence of something called a reen sternberg cell. And this is just a very large cell that usually has more than one nucleus and looks like it does in the picture there. And so if this cell is present, it's classified as Hodgkin's lymphoma. If it isn't there, the lymphoma is classified as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And just to give you an idea of how many different lymphoma subtypes there are, this is a list of the lymphoma subtypes classified by the World Health Organization in 2016. So there's a lot on this, on this list and I'm sure it'll get updated in the future as more lymphoma subtypes are continuously being discovered. And so besides the general categories of non-Hodgkin's and Hodgkin's lymphoma, there are other ways to classify lymphomas. And one of these ways is based on how quickly the lymphoma grows. So aggressive lymphoma is when the cancerous cells grow very quickly and usually cause the cancer to spread to other areas in your body. This usually requires an immediate start to treatment when it's diagnosed. Um, and now the other type is indolent, which means slow growing. So this type of cancer grows very slowly. Um, and usually it's years before someone presents symptoms of lymphoma and doesn't always require treatment. Um, instead, usually active monitoring for symptoms um, and getting regular doctor checkups. Um, so another way that you can classify lymphoma is based upon the lymphocyte that your cancer started in. So there's two major types of lymphocytes, T and B cells. And these cells both help fight off infection in your body in different ways. Um, and then the third final way to classify lymphomas is that actually some leukemias 
are classified as lymphoma. Um, and this is just ultimately because of how these cancer cells behave. Um, a common example of this is chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which behaves very similarly to some indolent forms of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So this is just a general classification of what I've gone over um, about lymphoma, lymphomas. So again, they can be generally classified as non-Hodgkin, Hodgkin's, and then CLL. Um, and then they can be further, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma can be further subdivided into B-cell lymphomas or T-cell lymphomas. And further from this classification, they can be classified as aggressive or indolent. Um, and just in black, black text here, I've included some of the breakout sessions that we're gonna be having later today um, on these different lymphoma subtypes. So we have diffuse large B-cell, mantle cell, follicular, marginal zone, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, peripheral T cell, cutaneous T cell, and we also have breakout sessions on Hodgkin's MCLL coming up soon. And usually one person only has one type of lymphoma, but there are some cases and some instances where lymphomas can transform into other subtypes. Um, a common example of this is transformation into diffuse large B cell. And this will be covered in the breakout sessions this afternoon. And so the most important take home message of this talk is that cancerous cells um, of the lymphatic system behave differently. And this is why there are so many different subtypes because they have different ways of presenting in the body. So they'll have different symptoms, they'll have different tests for diagnosis, um, each subtype will have different ways of how the cancer can be advanced, advanced in your body, um, and also predicted outcomes. And this ultimately, your subtype depends on um, what treatment options are available to you, the follow-up care that you receive, and overall your long-term management uh, when you are diagnosed with lymphoma. So this is ultimately crucial why you need to know the name of your subtype, because um, also knowing this information can help you educate yourself and others for the healthcare that you need and the healthcare that you want while living with lymphoma. Um, and it'll set up appropriate expectations about your lymphoma journey um, and help you connect with others that have a similar subtype, which might bring you comfort when you're diagnosed. And so a biopsy is required to confirm lymphoma diagnosis. Usually an entire lymph node needs to be removed in order to get clear results. And a pathologist will examine the cancer cells under the microscope. There's usually some tests that will be run and then a report is gonna be given to your doctor. And this is what is needed to confirm what type of lymphoma that you have and therefore the treatment options that are available to you. Just for one example, if the report comes back with the indicator that your lymphoma cells express a protein marker called CD20, this can qualify you for receiving an antibody treatment called rituximab. And so how do you get to know what your lymphoma subtype is? Usually this comes from your doctor and your healthcare team. Um, if you want a copy of the pathology report, you can get it, but you usually need your doctor or healthcare professional to help you understand it. Um, and we always recommend a family or a friend going along with you to these appointments to help you ask questions and to take notes um, and get your doctor to spell out the name of your specific subtype and unfamiliar words that can help you decide on what your treatment options will be. And so once you know what your specific subtype is, we think that you doing your own research is a great and empowering way for you to educate yourself and others um, about your specific um, subtype. Um, and so our website is lymphoma.ca where you can learn more about the information um, on lymphoma in the lymphoma tab here or in the resources tab. And in this resources tab, we have patient guidelines that are generated for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and CLL. And these should be able to help you get the information that you need. Uh, and we also recommend when you go to your doctor's appointments to ask specific questions. And we've generated a list of these questions, which can be found in our patient resources. And so when you, this is on the conference platform, 
um, in the purple toolbar, you're able to click this and also add the resources to your swag bag, which you can then email to yourself if you would like. Um, but you can also get this information, information on your subtype, usually through a hospital or a cancer care website um, and learn more information about doing an internet search on your specific subtype for resources. Um, research databases such as PubMed will have published articles on your subtype, but you gotta be careful. The terminology can be complex um, and scientific. So if you get overwhelmed or frustrated, just really look for plain, simple, or text. Um, and usually these are the patient guidelines that are Canadian specific. Um, and again, you have to be cautious about where you get your information from. Not all resources are reviewed by doctors or not specific to Canadians. So Health Canada has different regulations in the US and other parts of the world um, on how they approve cancer drugs and therapies available for lymphoma patients. And finally, Lymphoma Canada has a uh, subtype fact sheets on our website and is also located in the resources tab on the conference platform. Um, and this is concise and clear information review reviewed by our scientific advisory board on, uh, on our, uh, for our scientific advisory board and Canadian clinicians, which address each stages of lymphoma, your lymphoma journey and provides Canadian specific information for patients and their caregivers. So thank you everyone for listening today. Um, I hope everyone has a better understanding about what lymphoma is, how you can get to know your lymphoma subtype um, and answer any patient questions that you have. Um, so I'm gonna be answering some patient questions for the next few minutes. Um, and hopefully you guys will be able to get some more answers. Uh, so the first one that we have coming in says, I always have referred to my type of lymphoma as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is why is it important to know even more specifically which subtype I have? I have. Aren't they treated all the same way? So this is a great question. Um, and I'm actually going to go back to one of my other slides in order to be able to answer this, um, this slide here. And this again shows the general classifications of the lymphoma. So non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is classified by the absence of that green Sternberg cell um, that I mentioned that your pathologist will look at under the microscope. And this isn't enough information for your doctor or the pathologist to know what the likely outcome of your disease is or how to treat it. We really need to know whether it's classified, the cancer stems from a B cell or a T cell and if it's going to be, if it tends to be more of an aggressive form or an indolent form. Um, and this is ultimately the name of your specific subtype such as diffuse large B cell or marginal zone lymphoma. These are the treatment options that are developed for the specific lymphoma subtype. So this is how you get the most accessible and relevant inf information for your um, lymphoma. So that was a great question. Um, I'm going to go back and answer some more questions. Um, so another one is, I'm interested in connecting with other people who have a similar lymphoma subtype. Are there support groups or resources that I can connect with other people? Um, and this is also another great question. We do have resources and ways to support with, um, to connect with other people that have um, a undergoing a similar lymphoma journey. So I've actually prepared a slide in case this question has come up. Um, so on our conference platform, there is a join button or a link to um, access our peer mentorship program. And we just recently revamped this program. Um, and this is a one-on-one -on -one mentor program where you can match with patients or caregivers that have experience um, dealing with lymphoma. And this will hopefully provide you comfort um, about your specific subtype, ask questions um, about what's yet to come and just get more information about someone else's experience. Um, and you can also apply to be a patient, if you are a patient that has lymphoma or a caregiver that has experience taking care of someone with lymphoma, you can actually apply to be a mentor um, so to help coach someone else who is going, um, who is either newly diagnosed 
or needs help going through their treatment. Um, and then as well, every month, Lymphoma Canada actually hosts a patient support group with an organization called Wellspring. Um, and this ultimately brings together patients with various lymphoma subtypes. It is generally for all lymphoma patients, but we always try to find connections um, and common themes throughout these support groups. Um, and they occur on the first Wednesday of every month. So if you'd like more information about this, you can um, email info at lymphoma.ca. And so with that, I would like to thank everyone for attending this session. Um, it's been a great time to tell you more about why this specific, why knowing your specific love subtype is so important. Um, and please stay tuned for the next session on inequities and challenges of accessing lymphoma slash CLL treatments in Canada. That's starting in a few minutes. Thank you, everyone.